As a brand identity designer, the IPA Pro isn't just a tool. It's changed the way I work every day. From logo creation to full-scale branding, this device has revolutionized how I approach design. You might think it's just a tablet, but here's how I use it for tasks you wouldn't even expect. Earlier this year, Apple released the newly redesigned iPad Pro fourth generation and the all new Apple Pencil Pro. It's the thinnest and most powerful iPad to date, equipped with the M4 chip, more powerful in some ways than the latest MacBook Pros. And yes, I've bought the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M3 Max, but still the iPad Pro finds its place in my daily workflow. So over the last few years, the iPad Pro has become a serious contender to a MacBook for designers. Companies are designing apps that are fully featured, functional design apps and softwares right inside the iPad. Affinity is fully featured, giving you the ability to design from sketch to vector to final presentation on the iPad. That's mad. With Affinity, I'm able to design anything I can do on a MacBook, not just a logo design, but a full brand identity with all the assets needed to complete the project. I'll talk a bit more about that later. You may be thinking how I'm able to do professional design with basically a glorified iPod touch, but it's easy because of the accessories that you can use that you already have to make life easier for you. Your mouse and keyboard can be hooked up to the iPad and you can use Affinity like you would with your Mac. Doing this makes life so much easier if you're not used to designing using the Apple Pencil and touch features. Although I would say Affinity has done an amazing job in making it easy for you to learn the gestures needed to get nearly everything done easily by using the Apple Pencil and touch gestures. I've even got a video linked in the description below showing you all the gestures of Affinity Designer on the iPad to make your life easier when making the transition. Not only can you have a mouse and keyboard set up with the iPad, you can also plug it into a full Apple Studio display. This could be your main monitor when designing on the iPad, or it could be a canvas when you're drawing on Procreate. There's a really cool feature where you can draw on Procreate itself, zoom in, but the whole image stays on the actual monitor that you're using, so you can get a full view of what you're doing without having to zoom in and zoom out. Plugging it in essentially transforms your iPad into a creative powerhouse that you can take anywhere with you, not including the power of being able to draw on the damn thing. And I use an Apple Studio display for my MacBook. It's expensive, but works really well when using it for that. It basically transforms a MacBook into a desktop. Now, you might be wondering what apps do I actually use to get all my design work done on the iPad? After all, having the right hardware is only half the battle. So let me walk you through my favorite drawing apps that make the iPad a true creative powerhouse for me as a designer. The most obvious one is Procreate. Procreate is my go-to for sketching and illustrating. It's perfect for getting ideas down quickly and the brush engine is incredibly powerful. Whether I'm creating quick logos concepts or detailed illustrations or hand lettering, Procreate gives me the flexibility I need. The new hover feature on the iPad allows a whole new level of precision as well by letting me preview brush strokes before I even make them. I'll talk a bit about that later, but that is a real game changer for the iPad. As mentioned earlier, Affinity Designer is my choice for vector work. It's like having Adobe Illustrator, but optimized for touch with all the features I need for logo design, brand assets, and even print materials. I can seamlessly go from sketch to vector without ever leaving the app. And that's something I rely on for my, all my branding projects. Affinity Publisher, this is an app for graphics and layouts. This is the app that allows me to basically replace my desktop or MacBook. You can literally design brand presentations, magazine layouts, and anything you can think of. If you can design it on the desktop, you can design it in Affinity Publisher. Little plug, if you want to get to grips with the Affinity Suite, I've got a 10 minute beginner's guide video linked down below. What about Adobe products? I still use Illustrator on the iPad, but it's not fully featured. It's nice to be able to grab all my cloud documents and bring them onto my iPad and work on them slightly but it's not an app that is fully functional. It doesn't replace Illustrator on the desktop. Affinity Designer is a lot better on the iPad and Affinity Designer is native to the iPad. So you can use it on your MacBook, save it on your cloud, then work exactly the same way on your iPad. Blows my mind. But what about Adobe Fresco? Adobe Fresco is amazing for when I want to blend the best of both worlds, raster and vector drawing in one place. It's perfect for when I'm working on mixed media illustrations or just experimenting with different textures. The actual pencil 
in Adobe Fresco is really responsive. I love the way that it feels and it just, it just blows my mind when I'm using it. It just feels better than all the other pencils I've used in different apps. The integration with Adobe Creative Cloud is also handy because I can pull in assets from Photoshop or Illustrator without any hassle. Now, the main selling point of Fresco for me is the precision. In Procreate and other drawing apps, to draw straight lines, you draw and hold and a straight line will appear. You can manipulate it after you've drawn it, which is good, but it's not precise enough for logo design. Fresco has a set of rulers and guides that give you maximum precision when drawing. You can use a ruler or one of the shapes to draw around and giving you that sense of control. So when designing logos or word marks, it's important to reuse the same shapes and have a grid system that brings consistency. Fresco's ruler and guides give me just that. Now, for any of you that have a portfolio, I would highly recommend you use Squarespace. And anyone who's watching this, whether you're a creative, whether you're in employment right now in an agency, it doesn't matter where, Squarespace is the platform for you to host your website and to build it. We've been using Squarespace for years. In fact, we use Squarespace now for Design Academy, where we have a course on there on logo type design. It's not like a generic build website where it's all templates. No, it, they have pre-made templates, thousands of award-winning ones. However, you can like fully customize that. It's crazy. They've got a new fluid engine where you can literally just design on top of it. You can be a graphic designer. You don't need to know code to use Squarespace. However, you can design it in any way you like. It's pretty remarkable. So if you want to have your portfolio on there, you can do that. If you want to have an online shop on there, you can do that too. And if you want to design and create a course, then you can put that on there too. Squarespace is so versatile. And if you click the link below, you'll get 10% off after a free trial where you can actually create a website and play around with it and see what you like. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Now, these apps have completely transformed how I approach design work on the iPad from rough sketches all the way to polished presentations. But beyond the drawing itself, there are other ways I use the iPad to streamline my entire creative process. We all know the iPad is powerful enough to create, but how else do I use it? Another way is note taking. Note taking is a huge part of my design process, whether I'm on a client call or simply writing notes about a video idea I have. I do it all on the iPad. I personally use an app called Notability. I love the ease of use and how it syncs to my MacBook through iCloud so I can pull my handwritten notes up anywhere. And if you're a designer, you love whiteboards. It's a place where me and my team can add notes, tasks and deadlines or any information we need. They're specifically helpful when it comes to generating ideas. I have a few apps for this, Milanote and FigJam. Both of these apps allow me to get hands-on with the whiteboard, adding notes either through drawing or typing, bringing in inspiration through images, links to videos and articles. You can really do a lot with an infinite whiteboard. So when designing a logo for a client, me and the team will normally add all our notes, thoughts, research and mood boarding images to FigJam. With the iPad, I can actually do this in a more natural way through sketching and drawing my ideas as well as typing them directly into FigJam. And it's very collaborative as well. So if you do work remotely, or if you have a team of people that you need to get to grips with and a project on, then FigJam works really well on the iPad and the desktop. One thing I haven't mentioned enough about is the productivity value on the iPad. It's not just a content creation machine, but it gives me a lot of productive uses outside of drawing. One of these uses is having a second display. I normally work with two displays, one for YouTube videos or a warm fire whilst I'm working and the main screen for my actual work. When I'm working from home or outside the office, having the iPad gives me the ability to have two displays. But here's the kicker, wirelessly. It's incredible how productive this can be when working from a hotel, being able to work on a logo or brand asset while I'm having all the information I need on another display so I can easily navigate. The iPad isn't only acting as a second display. It actually works as a graphics tablet too. The newest iPads have a feature called Hover, where you can see a preview of your brush before you're touching the screen. This is incredibly useful to designers and artists that need to see the location and size of the brush before they draw. Apple brings this into Sidecar. This means the Hover feature becomes your best friend and gives you an authentic graphics tablet experience for free. Not only do you get a standalone drawing tablet, 
but you gain a free Wacom Cintiq wirelessly that allows you to work on your favorite desktop apps. The iPad Pro has gone far beyond just being a drawing tablet for me. It's become an integral part of my design workflow from sketching concepts to final brand presentations. Whether I'm working in apps like Procreate or Affinity Designer, generating ideas on digital whiteboards or improving my productivity on the go, the iPad is a creative powerhouse that continues to surprise me. It's versatile, powerful, and has completely changed the way I approach design, both in the studio and when I'm working remotely at home or in a coffee shop. And when you pair it with the right accessories and apps, it becomes more than just a secondary tool. It's a central part of my creative process. If you're a designer or thinking about making the leap to using the iPad in your work, I would highly recommend you do. There's no better way to combine mobility, creativity, and efficiency in one sleek package. Let me know in the comments how you're using your iPad in your design workflow or if you're thinking about making the switch. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more tips, tutorials, and insights into how you can get the most out of your creative tools. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.